All right, so here's a really charming one. What's the area of this semicircle? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you two ways to solve this. One way which I think is very uh, clever and fast, uh, and then a second way which is kind of like, oh, if you didn't do, spot the, the really clever way of doing this, this, then that's okay, there is another way to go about it. Slightly longer, um, but it's still doable. So. What's the area of the semicircle? Uh, in order to work out the area of a circle, semicircle, quadrant, anything basically circle related, you're gonna need to the, the size of the circle, which is its radius, right? Now, what's tricky about this diagram is, as presented, uh, there's no labeled radius on here, right? Uh, I mean, I could find where the center of the circle is and then measure, but the four and the six and the two, um, I don't know how they all relate to the radius. None of them is the radius. And so really this is a question of find the radius and that'll give you the area of the semicircle or at least find the square of the radius, that'll do the job, okay? Now, the way I'm gonna go about this is there's a, like I said, a bit of a trick to noticing this, and if you haven't already, pause the video, have a go at this yourself. It's actually um, really enjoyable and, and more richly rewarding. If you can go through and do the thinking um, to find a solution yourself before I show you one. Uh, but if you've had a whirl, um, or if you <laughs> have no pen and paper nearby and you're like, I'm not gonna give this a go, I don't wanna use my stubby finger, try and draw on my smartphone or something like that, then uh, I'm gonna show you how I went about this. I notice that there's this length four and two here, and this, this length six, which is, well, it's the sum of two and four. Now, how can I use that fact? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this length of six here, and I'm going to break it up into a length two and a length four. Now, you might say, why would you do that? And it's because I'm gonna create some right angled triangles that are related to each other. So let's, uh, let's use some, see if I can pick out some matching colors here. All right, so actually I'll, I'll make it a bit thicker. I think this one will do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, like I said, uh, pick an arbitrary spot um, somewhere in the middle there. It's not exactly arbitrary. It's a spot that divides up the six into a two and a four, right? So you can see I've tried to do the, the ratios there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw in a hypotenuse for this triangle over on the left hand side. Um, remembering that what I did was I said I want this to be equal to two. And then I'm also going to draw a hypotenuse, I think I need to make this a bit thicker, over on the right hand side like so, and then this triangle has a four in it, okay? So what I've done is, I, I don't know where this point is, but I know that there has to be a point that I can divide in a, in a two to four, or a one to two ratio, because they add up to six, okay? Now, have a look at these two triangles that we've created because there's some really important facts about them. Uh, for starters, they are both right angled. You can see them from the um, right angles on the outsides of the two and the four. I've just sort of used the fact that angles on a straight line equal to 180 degrees, or they add up to 180 degrees, I should say. And so therefore, on either side, you're gonna have these 90s on either side of those vertical lines, okay? So they're both right angled. And in addition to both being right angled, um, they both have an identical uh, pair of lengths on either side of the right angle, right? So what I've got here is a side angle side relationship. Side angle side. In other words, what I've created is two triangles that are congruent to each other. Two triangles that are congruent to each other. So they're identical uh, in size and in, in ratios and all that kind of thing. They're just in different places. Maybe they are flipped over or rotated um, or a bit of both, right? So what that tells us is if you have a look at their hypotenuses, I think that's the plural, right? Um, let's call this hypotenuse H and uh, you have a look at the other hypotenuse over here. Because these triangles are congruent, their hypotenuses both have to be the same. Does that make sense? So um, this hypotenuse and this hypotenuse have to be equal to each other. But, but hold on, if you have a look closely, right, both of these triangles have a vertex or a corner on the circumference of the circle, right? So what I've done is I've, I've noticed that from the circumference of the circle to some point inside the circle, let me say that again, from uh, the circumference to the inside of the circle, and you know that this is a diameter because the question told, told you this is a semicircle, right? So this is not just any chord, it is the diameter. There's only one place on the diameter of the circle where you can go to the circumference and it be equidistant. The only place that works on the diameter where you can say, oh, it's the equal distance to other points on the circumference, that's the center. 
that is the center of the circle right there. So in fact, what you found is that these hypotenuses are not just random hypotenuses. These are in fact, I can replace those H's with R's. These are both radii. So just have a think about this for a second. What I've used is just a little bit of logic to do with congruent triangles to prove that these two hypotenuses are the radii. And of course I can use good old fashioned Pythagoras' theorem to evaluate that radius because they're the hypotenuse and then that'll give me the area of the semicircle. I hope that's following and that makes sense. So let's actually do those calculations. I can say uh, two squared plus four squared equals r squared. So that gives me four 16, that's r squared there. I don't even need to work out what the square root of r is because to find out the area of a semicircle, area of semicircle, I need r squared anyway. So even if I took the square root, you'd be squaring it back anyway and you'd get back to this value of 20. So it's gonna be half, because it's a semicircle, pi r squared, but we just said that r squared was 20. So therefore it's half pi times 20 and that gives me 10 pi and it's units squared. Okay, so like I said, it's very cute. You can see it's delightful to have such a, um, an elegant piece of working. There's very little uh, uh, kind of lines of, of um, algebra required. But maybe you might say, Eddie, that's a bit weird though, that, that whole trick that you pull with congruent triangles, the whole idea of picking a weirdo spot that was two plus four equals six. Like I didn't see that at all, right? Well, if you're feeling like that, don't feel bad because when I first solved this problem, I didn't see it either. So I went about it a different way. You're gonna see that as we attack this question again, it's gonna take slightly more working, um, but not a lot more. And what's great about it is you don't have to, um, you don't have to pull that mystery rabbit out of a hat move that I mentioned before with the congruent triangles. So let's, uh, wipe the slate clean, mentally reapproach this question. The area of the semicircle is what we're after and these, just these three lengths are all that we've been given. Okay, so what can I do here? Well, what I'm gonna do instead is, um, I'm still going to pick a point on this uh, length six here, but I'm actually going to pick it a bit more specifically. Rather than use this two plus four equals six business, I'm just gonna say, hey, this is the diameter, right? So therefore, the center of the circle is somewhere on the diameter. So let's just call that there. I'm gonna define it as O now, right? So this differs from my previous approach, which was that I deduced that this point here was O based on the argument I made before with congruent triangles, hypotenuses, and radii. Here, I've gone about it by saying, I'm gonna define this as O. O's on the, on the diameter somewhere, so I'm gonna place that point there. But I don't know, therefore, what, uh, that's not what I want to do. I don't know what either of these lengths on either side of O are equal to, right? I know all the way to the circumference is the radius. That's the thing I'm trying to find, right? But I, I don't know what, say, like this little length in here is if I were to highlight this. Oops, let's make that a bit higher. So say, say this length here. I, I don't know what that is because um, I, I don't know anything about the, the breakup of proportions just because that's the center, right? So being that I do not know what that's equal to, I'm just gonna call it X. And what that tells me is since the whole purple um, length that we got given in the first place um, is six, therefore this remaining part here is the difference. So it must be six take away X like so. Now again, just carrying on my logic, remember in this approach to the problem, I've defined O, I've said that's the center of the circle, which means that when I go from the center up to uh, this point on the circumference here, uh, by definition, this is the radius because it's coming from the center of the circle. And same deal when I go over to here. So um, these are both radii because I defined the center of the circle knowing that it has to be somewhere on the diameter, right? So now I've got all my pieces of the puzzle. Um, I still want to find what the radius is, but I'm going to have to use the fact that the radius is in both of these right angle triangles and relate things together. So let's have a go. You can see uh, if I have a look at the um, left hand triangle, what I've got is by Pythagoras, four squared plus X squared equals R squared. So there's the Pythagoras relationship. Going over to the other triangle, what I've got instead of four squared and x squared, the shorter lengths are two squared and six take away x squared. That's also equal to r squared because that's the hypotenuse, right? So if I take these two, 
which I know independently from the two right angled triangles, I can substitute one into the other and that's going to eliminate out R. Now you might say, Eddie, why are you eliminating out R? R is the thing that you want to find. Well, if I eliminate R, I create a single equation which has a single unknown. In this case, I should use this color. In this case, it's the X and I can use that to then work out the R. Um, because these two equations both have R squared as a subject, it makes more sense to cancel that out first and we will return back to R. Obviously, I need it to work out the area. So I'm going to say, let's substitute one into two and that is going to give me uh, a quadratic in x, though you're going to see it's not going to stay a quadratic for very long. So I've got 4 squared plus x squared on one side, 2 squared plus 6, take away x squared on the other side. All right, so let's begin to disentangle this. I'll start evaluating some numbers here, 16, 4, what have I got here? So this is going to be 3x take away 12x plus x squared. And I said before, this is a quadratic because we've got x squared, but I have exactly one x squared on the right and exactly one x squared on the left. So they are going to cancel with each other. And that's good to know because it means I just get left with a linear equation in x and then the rest of it is just constants. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 12x to both sides. Um, I can see here, I've got uh, 40 take away 16, so that gives me 24. So I've got uh, x equals 2, which by the way, if you looked at the previous one, you're like, oh, I knew that x was equal to 2 because um, we had done this logic before, but I didn't, I didn't know, I hadn't proven it using this approach, right? So um, different flow of logic, but that's one of the reassuring things about mathematics. You'll always end up with the same answer. And so from here, what do I do with that? Well, my, my um, instinct is you would substitute that x value into the simplest equation that relates x with r, which in this case is equation one up here. You can see I can just put that two in there and it'll leave me with r squared. So um, I will substitute x into equation one gives me uh, 16 plus 4 equals r squared. r squared equals 20 like you saw before and I'm not even going to keep on going there because you know what happens from here. I just do half pi r squared and there's the answer.